When I saw the name of this, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, a fate. But then at the same time, I was like, is it fate? Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a photography pun. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know what it's actually called. No. You know? Like, how do you how do you pronounce it? So because it's got the slash, technically you're supposed to say F eight, but it's the photography pun. Like, yeah, it was fate. It was fate, but it was F eight <laughs> because we're photographers. Right. right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another episode of It Was F8, brought to you by John's Photo, where we talk to your local photographers and content creators. I'm your host, Jess Loso, and today we are joined by Karina. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Let's get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the industry. I've only been a videographer for a year. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I've really only been a photographer for like the last six months because originally, because of being laid off in the pandemic and I switched careers entirely, I just was like, I can't get lower than this. I might as well start <laughs> something absolutely Absolutely brand new, yeah. right? Um, and something that would allow me to be creative. And I have a second business um, where I do workshops around self-esteem and body image. So I actually was thinking that I could do video for Rising Strong mm -hmm. and really tell people stories that way. Because I really like storytelling through video and, mm -hmm. and photo. So that was kind of the original intent was like, well, let's learn how to do this. And then I was like, well, there's just, there's a high need for women videographers in Winnipeg and Manitoba. Like I can only count like four or five. That are prominent enough, right? Yeah, that and I would know them through social media mm -hmm. or something. Um, I also just love the wedding industry because it's just fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's a little scary. Sure. <laughs> but it's kind of where you thrive, right? Right. Yeah. And I have a lot of friends who are in the wedding industry. So it was kind of the natural um, progression to be like, okay, I could do wedding video too. Because as someone who is also getting married this year, um, I'm, I don't have a, a woman videographer, but I think I would be more comfortable, um, you know, in those times where like you're getting ready with your friends to have someone that you can really vibe with. Not that we can't vibe with men. No, but and that's that's a fairly common thing. And some of the guys that I know that are wedding photographers or boudoir photographers, they've definitely said like, you know, you have to have, you know, your second shooter or something like that, just in case if some people are not comfortable having a man shoot them getting ready in the morning or shooting a boudoir photo for them where they don't feel like they're getting leered at yeah. <laughs> kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's and like, it's hard. It's, yeah. a, it's a hard balance. Yeah. So it was about a, it was last June that I decided, OK, I'm going to find a course online and I found a course online, took this two week course. Um, I went out and bought a camera because I'm like, yeah, I'm on EI, but let's buy, <laughs> let's buy really expensive equipment. And then you can't work for like six, six to eight months. It's that retail therapy that really kind of had everybody going through the pandemic, right? Yeah. Online shopping, but it was a creative outlet as well. Right. For you. That was really big in a job that I think I've always needed um, to be creative, mm -hmm. kind of to be my own boss. So yeah. this was kind of the good way of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say when I say like photographer for only the last six months, I would say it really was in around February, March that I was like, let's just also learn photography mm -hmm. because I have the equipment <laughs> and I like taking photos. I've always liked taking photos just mm -hmm. as a hobby. Mm -hmm. I just self-taught photography and I shot in JPEG only until about June. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a fairly common thing. Because you know why? I was like, oh my God, like, it, it's in raw, it takes so much space. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, mm, eh, yeah. it, it looks fine to me in JPEG. And then like, just one day I was like, no, let's just shoot in JPEG. Like I heard that's really average. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way that I like in JPEG and raws is like, a JPEG is like your eggs already done. And a raw is kind of like you picking out everything and then adding the spices in as you're cooking. Right. It's not quite the same if you add in pepper and salt and all your good stuff afterwards compared right. to when you cook it in. And there's a lot more to work with and there's a lot more playroom as opposed to like, well, it's already done. Right. <laughs> That's a good analogy. I was so amped up last summer to be like, you know what, I can do this. Like this could be a career for me. And then November hit like right as I, I shot two weddings, mm -hmm. like two months after buying my camera. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like I love this. Like I felt fulfilled. I felt happy. I loved seeing other people happy like during their weddings. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, no, you can't work. So then I just went through a lot of like bad mental health in that the like six months that we weren't able to work because yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Well, you had already invested, right? Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm putting this stress on my relationship because obviously if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able to, to make this jump and mm -hmm. to 
try this brand new career path <laughs> change at 30, right? Yeah. So I'm just like, what am I doing? And then I would go out and just, sometimes we would just go out at night and take photos of downtown because I'm like, I need to be creative. I need to, you know, just, and also just self teach, right? Because that's what I was learning. Mm-hmm. And I had so much fun when we would do those things. So I just had to keep like holding on until we were yeah. able to work. So you primarily do weddings. Is there anything else that you <clears throat> shoot? Honestly, I've just been saying yes to everything. <laughs> like I said yes to this podcast, and I'm like, what are you doing? You're, you're getting married in a week and you're very crazy busy. <laughs> As you just said, no, no, (laughs) don't say no to anything. Is there anything that you found that you absolutely don't want to shoot? I'm not like an inanimate object person. I really like capturing like emotion. Okay. So, you know, like cars, flowers, not a a huge landscape girl. I Mm -hmm. do like it just for my own personal, but Mm -hmm. I'm not, um, Loso landscapes. I just can't top it, but I do love shooting more things that would bring out an emotion. So either like a family photo shoot or um, I just shot a couple girls recently just doing shoots just for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like pulls on my heartstrings because of like my other side, right? Mm -hmm. The rising strong side, Uh because I would love to tie them together and, um, and really showcase people's stories like with like their personal journeys Mm -hmm. and with self-esteem and things like that because I think sharing those kinds of stories really connects people and maybe someone online somewhere can come across that and feel heard. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. um, Because because of the summer was just like busy, busy, busy yeah. with weddings and, and just like life. Yeah. But that is something I want to focus on over the winter. Okay. Is um, putting like a call out for anyone that um, would like, and I would offer this service for free. Mm-hmm. So like a free photo shoot. And then we also do a little interview where, you know, maybe before and after, like yeah. how did you feel before? Where have you ever struggled with anything? Do you have any advice for others? That it's making stuff? that real connection with yeah. somebody. Right. And that's kind of how it's progressing too. is going beyond like, this is the creative side of what I'm doing. It's just showing appreciation for who they are, their journey kind of thing and <clears throat> giving them a platform. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's more to just a f- pretty photo, right? Because mm-hmm. there's like a human behind that photo, yeah. right? It's a lot of work. Video is a lot of work. Oh, God, it is. <laughs> but Trust you must, me. But <laughs> it's so worth it when the end product is the story you want to tell, right? right. And it, it conveys is. the emotion that you if want. If it can make someone cry, laugh, or feel something, yeah. then I've done my job. I'll see how a, a real year is mm-hmm. first because, like, I have no idea how to yeah. forecast what a, a non-pandemic year would be. But um, my my goal would be to work weddings really, like, June till October yeah. and then focus more on small business and, um, like, storytelling th- in the winter. Okay. Yeah. What was your first camera? When I was 18, I had a Canon Rebel XS. It okay. was, like, I don't know, a $500 camera. Uh, only ever used on auto mm-hmm. um thought i was really artistic and like taking cool photos hey i'm sure you were <laughs> um i actually still have the first photo like the literal first photo i ever took yeah and it was unedited because i didn't edit back then it was just mm-hmm. what i took yeah um i have it still and it's just like a flowers in my mom's backyard and yeah. i think i once i rejig my office i'm gonna take that photo and just put it on the wall. do you have a favorite piece of equipment Um, I really love my gimbal. Okay. Um, Makes a difference. It really does. (laughs) When I look at, like, video that I did before it, I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) But even then, like, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's never always smooth. No. When I'm looking... Like someone recently, I never do send raw video yeah. footage. I don't know why somebody would want the raw video with I, I think people don't understand that it's not going to be smooth the whole time. Yeah. Because like your gimbal does well, moving. It's the same thing. Like, and I've had this happen in the industry where people will ask like for the raw photos, like they want the raw files. I'm like, what are you going to do? Like, what's the point of going through me if you don't want me to edit it for you? Do you give raw photos? No. no. <laughs> I delete those. Right? And I'm like, I'm not putting my name on this. Like, yeah. like, why did you hire me if you just wanted unedited photos? Right. Like, I'm hoping that you're reaching out to me for my artistic style. But mm-hmm. part of that is the editing, right? And part of that is... It's like mostly the editing. <laughs> right? It is. It's 90% edited. Like, I know. I wish that people knew that because, like... <laughs> I I mean, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times. Like, oh, your camera takes great photos. It's like, okay. But it's really the editing. It's really like, you shouldn't... Photographers should just be called, like... Image makers or, like, art. Yeah. Well, we are artists. Do you have a dream piece of equipment? I really want to be great on the drone. 
very scared of it. Okay. Um, I borrowed um, a friend's or my dad's friend's drone, mm-hmm. and I've had it for about like a couple months. Yeah. I've flown it twice, okay. and I've just been like, I'm scared. I'm not make it. <laughs> is and it a large one, or is it no, one of the, like a Mavic Air? Kind yeah, of thing? it's yeah. just a Mavic Mini. Yeah, Mavic Mini. Mini. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's because it's not mine that I'm scared to really use it. <laughs> it makes a difference when you own it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause... So I, that's my next thing. But you know, I, I say that all the time. But I think I just need to slow down and like actually spend some time doing it. But mm-hmm. it will it will level up my video so much. Just go into an so. empty field away from all the airports and like in <laughs> uncontrolled airspace because you're too you're usually fine have yeah. your drone license yeah and just fly it's super fun mm-hmm. it's totally worth it it is really fun it's really fun to the, the amount the different kind of shots that you get i know yeah i know and it was really on my list to do this summer and mm-hmm. then it just got away from me yeah. like everything well again you're getting married so we'll, yeah. we'll give you a pass okay <laughs> maybe i'll buy one next weekend like, <laughs> speak it into existence <laughs> anniversary <laughs> gift to this karina's gonna get a drone Maybe that's what I should ask for for my wedding. <laughs> Just give you a bunch of like uh, gift cards yeah. <laughs> or music gift cards. Photo. Yeah, <laughs> why not? What's your favorite place to capture or to enjoy? I love the outdoors the most. Um, mm-hmm. Grew up camping, so like I'm most comfortable outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love to go to Birds Hill because you can see. A, you can have a bunch of different kind of shots depending where mm-hmm. you are mm-hmm. um, from anything from like the like spruce or poplar trees to like the grassy fields mm-hmm. so I like the variety it gives there okay. it's also closer to my house <laughs> <laughs> so if, if anyone's ever asking oh where should we do like our family photos I'm like where to yeah well it's not only convenient but yeah you can go at different times of day different times of mm-hmm. year and get so many different shots yeah alongside with the different scenery that you get from there. Yeah, and you could even go to the water if that's your thing. If you want to go to the beach. (laughs) Do you have a favorite photo of yours that you've Um, taken? I have a few favorite shoots. Mm -hmm. I just decided that I wanted to do like little reels. um, Not every photo shoot because that'd be too much, but Mm -hmm. like special photo shoots to me. So Mm -hmm. like for my friend's maternity shot, I wanted to do something more artistic. So I brought like pantyhose covered the lens you know to make it like more vintage looking yeah just special photos so they're like my friend's engagement photos like they were kind of the turning point where I had just started being like okay I'm only shooting raw and I'm like <laughs> wow <laughs> totally better but you have a number of yeah. ones that kind of resonate with you and I think you. that I like them the most because of the emotion that they made me feel for yeah. sure. it's a little selfish, but it's in but... that frame and you yeah. like I'm sure it's it goes beyond you just feeling that like most of all your clients can see that and potential clients can see that yeah right like hey these are the kind of emotions that I want captured yeah let's go through Karina yeah <laughs> Me. what is your ultimate photography goal at this point or videography goal travel mm-hmm. um I would love to be asked to like follow someone around Europe or South America Ooh. like that'd be really cool even if it's like a like a blogger or like a wedding mm-hmm. and then also to train my fiance to be my second shooter <laughs> that's kind of the dream right I know so, like, <laughs> like if you're ever to have a business this partnership it's like well why can't my spouse do it yeah well I know I know a few photographers who've trained their spouses to do mm-hmm. that um for when they do like elopements or you know Ooh. fun fun trips mm-hmm. so I think that and to also be known as like a storyteller yeah um and someone who captures heartfelt stories or really emotional ones yeah um documenting yeah, yeah. I I love documentaries not yeah. that I want to be a doc uh, like a like a scientific documentary <laughs> or anything just internationally like, oh yeah. yeah well obviously like yeah. that'd be the dream to be paid to travel yeah right so yeah. um yeah and and just being able to be financially stable <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's a dream right, <laughs> right? the so. entrepreneurship paired with the creativity yeah 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 and being able to just make my own schedule and if I eventually can have kids then I would want to have a schedule where I only work a couple of days a week so that I can spend more time with them yeah. so what's your craziest story photography videography related I don't really like have crazy story I mean I have injured myself oh yeah I was filming a wedding and I was like filming the bride walking down the aisle and yeah. she started to pick up the pace so I'm like picking up the pace and I just smoked my head on a tree so hard in front of a hundred people and I was like I'm concussed but I have to keep going <laughs> I am concussed, then, but I'm paid to be here right then, now. And then on the tripod footage of myself, I see it. I'm like, boom. Oh, you get- <laughs> 
So eventually I'll probably share that sometime, but like I I felt I felt concussed for a day or two. Really? Yeah. You're like, I gotta take a break. Yeah, literally. And then it was like, okay, I gotta film <laughs> their ceremony. <laughs> What's a piece of advice that you would give to anybody that's looking to get into videography or photography? Um, to just go out and like start it. Mm -hmm. um, don't overthink things. Try and reach out to people in the industry to not just collaborate with, but just to like make friends with, right? Yeah. So I think the best thing for me to get into the wedding industry was um, a friend of mine who's a wedding photographer. I saw that she was doing a styled shoot and I was mm -hmm. like, I just DM'd her. I was like, do you guys have a videographer yet? Because I never see videographers at styled shoots. And yeah. she's like, I never even thought of that. She's like, do you want to come? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I only had a tripod at the time. So I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I went out only owned my camera for a month and I just went, right? Yeah. So, and I think from there, I now see videographers more at, at styled shoots. Yeah. And I myself have done three. And I think that doing those kinds of things mm -hmm. and reaching out and just, instead of waiting for people to come to you, just reach out and say, hey, if you're going to do a styled shoot or do you want to collaborate on that? Mm -hmm. Just to get your name out. Um, Create and, those opportunities for yourself. And you'll have to do some work for free. Yeah. It's, more, it's natural <laughs> at the beginning. In all yeah. honesty, right? Because yeah. it's like, well, I don't know again like what my sh my shooting style is I don't know what to expect or mm -hmm. how my my workflow is gonna be right yeah. we're gonna do uh, is it this one I think it is yep so it's it's like catchphrase okay um so there's words in here so we'll do two each <laughs> <laughs> so I will I will say one one of these words <clears throat> I'll, I'll pick one and then I only get like one word or like two words we'll say oh. And you get to guess what that is. Okay. It's all photography related. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so you're testing my knowledge. <laughs> right? Don't shoot in JPEG. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, oh, God. Long. Exposure. Uh, lens. Telegraphic. <laughs> Zoom. Oh. You were on Tele the right. Photo lens. There you go. Telephone. Telephoto. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what is it? No, it's oh. in there. <laughs> No, you get you, you know the knowledge of uh, oh photography related words. Sunset? <laughs> Landscape? Light? Backlit? Sunset, light. Mm, pretty. <laughs> Lens flare? No. No, what is it? Golden hour. Oh, that. Oh, damn. I messed that up. I should know that. Okay. You really should. <laughs> okay. I will take another one. <laughs> Landscape. Wide lens. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's wide angle. <laughs> I'm like, why did I get these two words? Uh, wide angle. Uh, um, telephoto. Mechanical. Zoom? Clean. Mechanical clean. Uh, ISO? Um, attachment. Attached. Clean attachment. What was the, the first word? Uh, mechanical. <laughs> mechanical. Sensor cleaning? Sensor. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, you know what? We'll do one more. <laughs> one more to each, because this is funny. <laughs> Um, oh, um, aperture. F stop. Exactly. <laughs> you got Look at it. Me. <laughs> You're going. No <laughs> You're in the right game. Oh. One more. <laughs> oh my god, I read this wrong. And I was like, why is this in here? <laughs> I'm a little dyslexic. You're, I'm not lying. It's fine. You're going to tell me what you thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Setup. Backdrop? Depth? Depth. Setup. The hell? Um, give me a third word. Final. Depth. <laughs> <settled. laughs> Final. Um, uh, stage. Compositions. Okay. Um, I didn't yeah, know that, that is a weird one. Yeah, that is kind of a weird one. That's yeah. all right. Okay. I never use that word in my actual <laughs> like. It's a comp. It's a composition. I composed this by myself. I thought I read it cosmopolitan. <laughs> I'm like, like what? Like the magazine or the drink? Or like, are we watching Sex in the City? Yeah, I don't like, quite understand. No okay, there is another cup beside you. Okay. And you're going to pick one. And it's a, it's a cup of puns. A cup photography, of puns. Yeah, cup okay. of uh, photography puns. So you pick whatever you feel your heart is drawn to, and you're going to look into this camera, and you're going to read it with all of your conviction. Let's find a dark room and see what develops. 
That should be like a cheesy pickup line that somebody should actually use. Yeah, you should. That would be very little <laughs> Tinder dates. <laughs> I don't know if that'll go the way that I want it to go. <laughs> well, uh, thanks yeah. for joining us. Thanks for having me, it's fun. You're super fun to have. And thanks for joining us on another episode. And until F8 brings us back together, we'll see you next time.